Good morning, Simona. How are you? Good morning. Um, very well, I yeah? have to say. Yes, thank you. How uh, you you just came home from Holland? Mm-hmm. You were in Harlem. Yes. How was Harlem? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm really having time of my life, I have to say, after the COVID, because I am involved in international projects. I collaborate a lot of with um, uh, a Dutch company. And Holland is just a beautiful country. Yeah, and but you Harlem. have you yeah. have connections there also. You have a son, at least one there. In Belgium, yes. In, uh-huh. in Flanderen, so it's the same language. Okay. Yeah. So, but but you mm. do you go there often, like, or or you visit Holland a lot then because of your business? Mm, in the last period, quite. Yeah. Yeah, and um, going to Belgium, you know, my son is thirty, so it's. Um, <laughs> he doesn't want to see his mom too much, or uh, that's not this uh, urge. He has his own program in life, and he's coming over, or I come over. I would love to come for Hense Fest, hmm? which yeah. is which is a student festival of music and and drinking and dancing on the street. So I love the atmosphere. So yeah. I, I definitely will come in July. And uh, you were here actually before on this podcast. We were talking some time ago. We were talking about kind of charisma mm-hmm. and how charisma is important. I think I we called it flirting in business or something yeah. like that. And that's very much part of what you do. You're kind of a, I don't know, are you a coach or... or coach, trainer, mm-hmm. yes. And you're very much playing on those kind of, let's say, softer human elements using your character. Yes, I, I do the soft skills mm. and I like to play you know, around with more subtle topics like like being charismatic or, well, seduction is not my main topic, of course, <laughs> but I think we all have our strategies how to seduce life or business mm. without thinking about it. So mm. I, I, I find it quite interesting pattern. Yeah, that was actually kind of what got me. I mean, and yeah, we've met each other since then a few times and... Uh, and that kind of was what got me on to thinking uh, about you in a way that, I mean, now you're an attractive woman in your 50s and uh, you've been modeling in the past. You've always had, have you always been attractive? Absolutely not. No? <laughs> and I don't find myself really attractive. I think... Um you know, some people get better with age. I think that's my case. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't find myself really being beautiful. But I you were a model when you were young, though. It was just a little job, you know. It yeah, but nothing. still, you must have had something that I, people I looked liked. good on pictures, but they correct them. <laughs> <laughs> but I w- this made me think, like, I was mm-hmm. thinking, okay, so, so how is it to be an attractive 50-plus woman and go on dates and stuff like that and i've been thinking a lot about this because obviously myself being the same age i i i can i felt how these things changed how you per, per, perceive dating and partnerships and what you're looking for in relationships and, and and in every sense of that it changes with time and that's kind of like uh yeah i thought about bringing you on and, and kind of talk talk about those things and and uh and also how it is then to to uh, to be using those kind of yeah flirting seduction charisma in a business world as a woman you know because it might open some unpleasant doors sometimes you mm-hmm. know because you i think do do men hit on you a lot mm-hmm. because of this mm-hmm. do they <coughs> I mean, do you do you know do you th- do they think that you're welcoming something that you might not be welcoming? It can happen, yeah. but I think I should be responsible for that. So it's happening very rarely, I have to say. Okay, but um, anyway, so so just if we try try to kind of get straight into it, like mm-hmm. uh, when you're, is it harder to to find someone the older you get because you somehow have higher standards or you are more protective of your own time i mean if you look at yourself and the people around you or the women that you know 
are we talking about dating now? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think you will always have immature woman and mature woman, which is not really a question of age. Mm. Talking about someone someone who is maturing in a healthy, put together way. I think at 50 you really value more your time. You know what you want. You definitely know what you do not want, mm. you know, and you just go for it because also there is not so much time left. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think you play less games and you are more honest and more liberated mm. because there is also less social pressure on you, less expectations. So you get more bonuses, mm. you know. Mm. I think if you. Okay, being after 50, you went through crisis and in your private life, in your um, parenthood, in your career. And if you learn of it, you gain self, uh, healthy self-esteem. Mm. And if you have healthy self-esteem, you have more healthy expectations, you know. And you, I would say, if you accept things about yourself, it's the best start to change to change whatever you want to change you mm. know? and well they say that um, um, your self image is better predictor of your future uh, success it's mm. better than a line of uh, previous successes mm. so if you you know it's like the Pygmalion effect if you think positively about your future expectation uh, if you have positive um, expectations from other people if you trust them you know trust that's 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 a big topic if you trust into the world if you trust in other people you usually have higher self-trust you trust yourself mm. you trust that you have all the capabilities to cope with life you know that you I have my body if I take care of it it will carry me. I have my head, my mind. If I take care of it, I can figure out things. I can learn new things. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this, this is opening the world for you. And uh, actually, not you are unstoppable. I don't know if, uh, if I answered the question. Well, but. yeah, you did. But you also <laughs> feel <laughs> it's a little bit philosophical. But, <laughs> but I, I, you know, like, it was interesting what you said. Like, um, and I, I, th- I think, and the reason why I asked this, you know, if it's hard to, to find someone, then uh, it, it's mainly, it's not that there are fewer people out there. It's more about that you know more what you accept and what you don't mm-hmm. accept, right? That's yes. But what is it that you wouldn't accept now that you would have accepted when you were like, uh, let's say, 25 in, in a man? Like, for example, if you met a man today... Mm-hmm. It, w- what would be the stuff that you would never accept today? What's the red flag? Okay, I will be very personal and maybe incorrect. Um, Please. <laughs> I would definitely not accept on the first date, and, and that's, that's the red flag, and I, I'm walking away, man who is not generous to a woman. Mm. You know, I'm generation, I can... I can stick to it. I am a little bit, let's say, old-fashioned generation. And I want to be treated like a lady. I expect the guy to pay for me. Uh, not always for everything, but I expect him to be generous with his time, with his compliments, with his intentions, and also um, providing. I, uh, I don't mean in in the context as a gold digger are you know, uh, looking for men, but I mean... For me, a generous man, that's that's quite important because if you are generous with money, you are usually generous with your with your attitude. Mm. You know? um, and before I was just so forgiving, so understanding, you know, always ready to help, always ready to, to save the other one. I don't want to save a man. I mean, he's, let's say, 50 plus. He should learn lessons, you mm. know. Even if he's bankrupt, it, it's not issue. If he has the attitude that he ha- he has his past, but he has also the future in front of him, that's appealing. Mm. If you see that he has not future anymore, that's absolutely not appealing. Mm. 
So, mm-hmm. so when you mean generous, I guess what what you you're not meaning that you need something fancy. Y- you know, you're not saying that yeah, he needs to take me to Paris on the first date or something. It's more that you know when you go to that dinner that, or something yeah, well, th- that is clear. He takes that's care of the clear. bill. And also, if he takes me uh, to Paris on the first day, that's already a red flag. Yeah. Because there is something very narcissistic about it. You, know? uh-huh. you have this love bombing. You know, it's it's exaggerated. It's it's too much. It's it's um, the va va effect. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's so. If is it too much Hollywood like? That's a red flag. That's mm-hmm. not how life is. You know, I don't mind to take me. To Paris, of course. Yeah, but not on <laughs> not on the first. Not with those exaggerated gestures, you know. Mm-hmm. This this um, I had those guys, and um, that was a hell. Yeah. <laughs> Once they trap you, you know, it's it's a hell. But uh, but it's an interesting thing because uh, I think just just to take this specific um, thing about picking up the bill in mm-hmm. a restaurant, you know, I'm. I'm the same generation like you. For me, this is just a natural, normal thing to do, and I, I, it has nothing to do with, you know, gender equality or that oh, the woman can't pay or something. It's just, it's just something that is like coded in me that this is something I take care of, and and I don't read anything more into it. In the same way, there could be some things that I would expect a woman to take care of, which you know, like, and it's just like, it's a natural thing. But nowadays, it's. I think a lot of men, or younger men specifically, are kind of confused about this because, on one hand, they're being told man up and be a man, but then when they do those things that they maybe think are being a man, paying the bill in the restaurant, for example, or opening the door, or whatever, you know, mm. carrying the groceries, mm. or all these things, you know, then. They are being told, no, 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 not not this way. Be a man, but we're not being told, or they are not being told necessarily how. Then you know, it's a. Uh, but it's interesting to hear this. So you you would say, yeah. Take care of me in some way, I but would say, I don't need mm-hmm. you to impress me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's more about. Show me. Show me your you intention. Can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Show, it, it, he can invite you for a picnic and make homemade sandwiches if he yeah. cannot afford it, you know. Yeah. But uh, that he make an effort. He made the effort, you know. Yeah. He had the intention to make it nice and cozy. That's uh, that's the thing, and mm. and and that's quite you know mm. obvious at the first uh, at the first date, you but know. And um, also, what I sorry, um, maybe I said it already last time, but um, date is not having fancy meal for free. Mm. That's not what I'm talking about, you know. It's about being viewed, being noticed, mm. you know. Uh that the gay that the guy hears what I'm saying, not only listening, but really quality listening, you know. That 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 he somehow just show me your interest. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. um if you are mindful, you can see it quite quickly. You know. But does this become better? Because I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how how to say this in the right way. So I'll probably say it in the wrong way. But like when you're dating, when you're twenty five, you just want to fuck. You know, like you're just looking for short term fun in a way. Mm-hmm. But does that change when you're like fifty? Are you? Because I'm. You got me with this active listening for example and that that made me think about like I, I never actively listened to anyone when I was 25 mm. because I was just actively listening to my own needs you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and uh, so do the intentions of a date change like you you go maybe to fewer dates but you would expect a higher quality from each date right and the and 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 not yeah and you're you see it as a step into something mm-hmm. more, not yes. just for a one-night stand. Well, there's nothing wrong with one-night stand, but talking about relationships. But I think it's vice versa for girls as well. Girls mm. also do not listen to the guy's needs. You know, they, they want to be flattered. They are busy with their own image and what they want to experience. I think it's with the age, mm. we had it all, mm. and we can be picky mm. on what really matters. Yeah. Yeah, I often think about it like with these. Uh, uh, with we have made humans disposable somehow. Like mm-hmm. 
with the dating apps and all this that like uh it's so easy to turn away from someone because you have 200 other people waiting to meet like if you have i don't know tinder or something like this and you 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 match with you know i don't know here in prague you know a woman like you could easily have 50 to 100 people ready to meet you know but more probably even you know and uh, and then then you go and meet me and then i i don't know i get a little bit too drunk or i say the wrong thing or something like that you don't need to give me a second chance mm. because you have plan b in your pocket you know you have it on your phone you have all these other guys that you might even have been riding with so so it's it's in some way like um you know we we got i think we got to the stage where you're saying you know self image and all this that we 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 don't give people a chance anymore in mm. the, in the same to the same extent i think it's we should be responsible for our choices mm. you know yesterday i met a, a lovely dutch girl sitting next to me in the in the plane she's a psychologist as well and uh, she was just reading a book choices uh, uh, from some psychotherapist and she quoted me one sentence that you can be the cinderella um discovered by a prince who is giving you the shoe which fits the beginning of the fairy tale and you can end up with a fetishist who has shoe fetishism yeah. issue blame yourself you know so i would like to divide dating and uh like dating apps i don't have really experiences with mm. the o- mm. online online dating mm. i in my perception it's completely sick mm. market and it is attracting certain people with certain patterns so if you want to have the illusion that men are like in catalog and and women are extremely picky 80% of guys you know listed they will uh, they will love them off or make them ridiculous you know mm-hmm. not not really feeling it but just yeah, yeah. to 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 feel the power so this is something a little bit unnatural it's not true that they are queuing for you it's illusion you know and and it brings you away from your own desires and needs on and from the real you know it makes you to believe that you have endless chances which is not true mm. and and it brings you away from the quality mm. and um but this yeah. is interesting what you said now like that you say that 80% of the men will be somehow disqualified um because you you, you rank yourself pardon uh, among other girls mm. um by the kind of guy you pick mm-hmm. you know so if if you are number 10 because you are beautiful rich and and successful and you pick number three, you you drop to number five. Mm-hmm. uh Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, your yeah, 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 yeah. Which, which, <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> a little bit is the case of the of the dating scene. I mean, online dating. But I, I would like to refer. Actually, now you re- reminded me a study from Helen Fisher, mm. which is a psychologist who studied um, a brain in love. That's quite interesting, mm. and we are pre-wired to be attracted to certain kind of people and we should actually accept it. So so can I describe what she mm-hmm. her findings were? Mm-hmm. So mm, y- you have people who are dopamine driven, so you have the dopamine lovers. Um they need the excitement. And they need excitement. Mm-hmm. They need to discover new experiences, new things, new places, you know, new erotic positions they they mm. need to um, they they are quite active in um, self development because they they constantly need to stimulate stimulate you mm. know whatever it is and uh, richard branson for example is uh, is um, a representant of this dopamine brain and those people they are daring they are risking they are very full of life you know they have um, a lot of temperament and they also have rich dating life and they can end up with someone in 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 a, in a harmonious relationship highly probably they will 
they will cheat on each other, which doesn't mean that the relationship is not working out. And they need people of the same kind of the same kind. So dopamine brain is searching for dopamine brain, but it will never be this happy family, happily together, you know. It won't be the stereotype. It for will sure. not be the stereotype. Yeah. It, it will be sex, drugs and rock and roll. It yeah. will be and still it can be fulfilling and, and uh, maturing together in, in the right way. Mm. And, and it will definitely be probably about giving space and uh, freedom and respect and being generous and forgiving, mm. you know, and understanding that um, I cannot demand the other one to fulfill, to fulfill all my needs because mm. I am not willing to fil- fulfill all his needs. Mm-hmm. I, I have my life, you know, and we can share it. So that's the dopamine. Then you have the serotonin, which is more the classical stereotype. And somehow I feel that we are forced by the society to live the marriage the life and the serotonin. But if is it not your brain case, you know, you will never be happy. Something will be missing. Mm. So these are people who really want to settle down, you know, going for the small goals, uh, going for safety and security, um, loving, harmonious mm, predictable life scenario. Um, those people very often talk about values, you know, and in the old fashioned way, uh, caring, sacrificing, you know, giving up for, and not feeling uh, 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 like a victim, not victimizing themselves, but they understand this is part of the, of the game. And then you have um, the testosterone and estrogen, stereotypes where estrogen can be also male so typical estrogen male is bill clinton mm. so that, that, that there was a joke that when united states will finally have a female president well they already did his name is bill clinton mm. so so he he is the typical estrogen driven guy and his wife hillary is the typical testosterone because she is really testosterone driven lady you know she was she is bold, she's daring, she's risky, she's dominant. Mm. Um, she broke many glass ceilings in stereotypes in the United States when she was young. And so it can be male or woman and they complement each other. So so the testosterone needs estrogen and vice versa. I, I think this is good to understand. And mm. um, why I started to talk about it, I think that... Um, Maybe the testosterone and dopamine, I don't have data, it would be interesting, are on the online dating sites, mm. but serotonin people, they would freak out, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think everybody can... So you have the extremes there, mm-hmm. but you won't have kind of the, the common middle ground. Yeah. But I think also, like, my experience with these dating apps was that <clears throat> the expectations were in some way different that I felt as a as a guy, I mean, I I would go into meeting someone with kind of an open mind. I wouldn't go in there thinking, okay, I want the relationship, I want the family or something. I was just like, okay, I want to meet someone. If they're nice, then maybe mm-hmm. it will go somewhere. And uh, and I felt sometimes that that some of the the women that I met, they were they wanted to skip two or three steps that like. And I remember one conversation that I had with a the, that a girl. I actually didn't meet her through this, but indirectly, I met, she went on a date with a guy that I knew and uh, through mm-hmm. an app. And then we met me and her, mm-hmm. and we started hanging out together. But there was never any anything going on, you know, mm-hmm. like we we never kissed or hold hands mm-hmm. or anything like that. But we, yeah, we went out for for coffee and dinner, and I paid. But I would have done that for any mm-hmm. woman, you know, mm-hmm. like it mm-hmm. was not me trying to. Um, signal anything and uh, and then she to- li- then then she told me after a few weeks you know like why why are you spending your time on this and I said well because I enjoy it and she said yeah but I would never spend time with someone like you unless I thought it would lead to something oh and I, and then we had a conversation I told her listen you know maybe who knows maybe after six months I would have fallen in love with you who who, who knows mm-hmm. I think it's unlikely because you usually feel these things yeah. quickly, you know. But but I felt that that with this um, dating app, somehow it maybe gave people the idea that you could skip some steps. Like yeah. that, that because you have already agreed that the looks 
are good enough and whatever, maybe some fun in the text exchange or something like that. And then I, as a man, I could say, okay, I know this girl because I've been riding with her for a week, so we can go for sex. Mm. A woman would think, oh, I know this guy, I've been riding with him for some weeks, we can have a relationship, we mm-hmm. can create a family. So I, I, I feel that the, the, the expectation of what happens mm. is com- completely unrealistic because if you, even if you have a dating app, you still need those. You need the physical attraction, you need the mental attraction, you need comfort, you need to feel good around the person mm. and that you won't go, go get through your phone. Absolutely. And also, I think you get this dopamine rush, this digital cocaine, yeah. <laughs> which is completely yeah, 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 covering, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the common sense. Mm. But um, one thing I, 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 I wanted to, like, yeah, are you actually said that, uh, uh, you mentioned earlier, you said something about that, uh, settling down and having an idea about how life you you tried those things i mean mm-hmm. you have two sons you have yes. one of them is 30 yes so you at some point were you in the serotonin world then or or what was happening with young simona mm. i am definitely dopamine mm. i search for um excitement and and adventure was it always like that yes Yeah, because you actually even left here just with nothing, speaking no foreign language or anything. You just <laughs> took a bus when the communists mended, right? Uh, I, I hitchhiked. Yeah, yeah. hitchhiked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 how was that then? To like, well, how you're young when you have your first mm-hmm. one? Yes, yes. Um, well, once you become pregnant, then you you are flooded with with the the hormones so the pom- the dopamine goes a little bit aside the, you you are expecting the baby you you get more um, how would i put it probably serotonin serotonin driven you in in my case i really felt very special i was happy i um i felt mm, kind of divine you know creating new life in me um i am very lucky that i experienced many things in uh, in positive way you know so i didn't have much i was not much sick the first trimester i felt special i looked good uh i really enjoyed you know like breastfeeding was huge enjoyment for me everything worked worked well i had good attachment with the baby so so it was all glorious beautiful experience and with the first one i was 24 i was not 25 yet so mm. you you are very young i came from communistic country i was used to have nothing so uh, having discomfort was second nature to me you know like lack of sleep lack of money stuff like this <laughs> yeah. so so it was really not not frustrating uh, what didn't work out was the relationship with the father And um, I always had this gut feeling that um, the most important thing is to be happy, you know, really provide happy environment to the child. Uh, not happy means not wealthy, mm. means like we laugh a lot, we have fun, and if we are healthy, we can we can somehow survive. You know, if you work, you always have some money. I mean, if you learn the language, you will be one of them. I mean, that was not the issue. And um, well, I, I I was telling the story in the last podcast about my husband. So we are friends now, but the relationship was not healthy from the beginning, and I think he has some psychological issues. Mm. And he didn't solve them. Uh, some uh, early childhood traumas. And I cannot help. I cannot help him. I'm not the kind of woman who will sacrifice herself. Well, I tried, but it ne- never worked out. You know, for some childhood traumas of other person. <laughs> so, <coughs> so I decided to to leave and create a different, more loving and 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 happy environment for my child mm-hmm. and it was never issue and now uh, the latest surveys uh, confirm what i was guessing that time you know that saving marriage just for keeping the marriage and being absolutely in toxic relationship unhappy 
it's unhappy life. I mean, we have we are here for a visit. You know, my my yeah, attitude yeah. is it's a short time. It's a short time. Mm-hmm. You never know when it when it ends. So let's get the maximum out of it. You know. But that's that kind of you know like what you're saying that um, you mentioned this saving a marriage for the sake of the children, for example. Um, that was an interesting thing when I came here, fifteen uh, almost fifteen years ago. That to Prague, that uh, I started hearing those stories. I started hearing about people who were having a relationship outside of the marriage, you know, like, and, but they had decided to stay married for the children, to keep some sort of a family unit together. I mean, obviously, some people may be for financial reasons also. Mm-hmm. I mean, that could sure. be, but, but it, it, it was a completely new thing for me be, because, uh, you know, like, uh, it, maybe the new thing was just that people actually said it out loud. And they mm-hmm. did something like, I remember I met one guy who, who was married, but he had a girlfriend that he went to stay with two days a week, and then, but he the five other days he stayed with, and everybody knew that his his wife knew it, and 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 the girlfriend knew it, then he knew it. So maybe this is actually happening also in Iceland, but nobody knows, it's just cheating. It's mm-hmm. not in mm-hmm. in the in the light, you know. It's yeah. in the darkness somewhere, but but it it. It it made me think about this, like being, like leaving a marriage, and and the thought of being alone is a little bit scary, I guess, because you become like, a, I mean, first of all, you probably maybe think you're a failure. You you I failed, mm-hmm. and then secondly, you become in some way a little bit of an outcast. Plus. If you have children, you be you you have a baggage. So you you go from being married, which is the norm and mm-hmm. uh, how we should be and how society has been built. You go from that to be a failure with baggage because you have kids and an ex and whatever unresolved issues there, and in some way a social outcast because all of your friends are still married. Everybody that you know is still married, and and so on. And how how. How how was this for you? I mean, you never thought about these things, or or you never felt that that somehow this would drag you down to leave those circumstances. Hmm, that's a really tough question. I doubted myself terribly later, but the moment I did it, I didn't doubt at all. I definitely signed. I would I would do the same again, mm, mm. and I think this is um, what you describe is limiting self belief. You know, you limit yourself, but by, by being outcast, definitely you are um, less attractive on the dating scene with two kid, two little kids. Somebody has to raise and and, and so on. That that's one point of view. You know, uh, referring to the um, cultural uh, demand. But it's really not my case, you know. I, I, I looked differently at the thing. I I, uh, I I moved to Belgium. I love the country till now, you know. It's my second home country. And <clears throat> I was in love with the country. I was in love with the language, with the architecture. I was, there were so many things to discover, to explore, to do differently. I always wanted to explore explore world. It was after the Velvet Revolution, you know. It's, I say, I, uh, you, you should also put my story into the context you know? mm-hmm. so, so finally we freedom, were free freedom yeah. and nothing would stop me from the freedom and mm. i felt young enough and strong enough to take care of my child so and i felt young enough to have another relationship so i i didn't really i i i'm not fear driven i'm more like passion driven mm-hmm. you know if you are passion driven you have completely different logic um and um um life um Dilemmas, I would mm-hmm. say. You know. But I, I, when I was knew that you were coming here, then I was thinking about like if we kind of go to like the role of the female is so different now than just fifty to seventy years ago, which is a very short time mm-hmm. <laughs> in our 
history of humans, you know, that that's a tiny for me, of course, it's a long time, but for kind of, you know, humans, it's a long, it's a, it's a very short time. And, uh, and like, it has changed so much, this, uh, what you can be and what you are expected to be. I mean, like, I, I, I often think about, like, um, when I was a kid, I never thought of my f- mom as a sexual figure, never as a, someone who would dress up and 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 get the attention of men or or something like that i mean my parents are still married so I'm, I, but i mean like you're just born and then there's some mom and she's just a mom and my mom was just you know working and taking care of us and doing her best to kind of keep things running you know and but then something has happened somehow with this kind of more gender equality and more kind of female liberation in some way that that a mom can also be a goddess somehow mm-hmm. you know and and can be a sexual thing and she can be but but you still also have all the other things to be you also need to be the mom you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how 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 is this for a woman like is this uh i don't know is it difficult to 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 be all these things at the same time to be a woman and a mom and mm. I don't think so. I don't I absolutely don't think it's difficult. You mm. know, um you are referring to some cultural standards. I am more looking for um role models, you know, because if you look at the history there were always period of time when women were quite independent, you know, they had power in a way, you know. Mm-hmm. Um I recently saw a movie, I was absolutely hooked to it, uh, about Veronica Franco. Did you hear of her? No. Um, it, uh, it was a courtesan in the late Renaissance period. And uh, she was in love with, uh, with a guy from neighborhood. But he was from the noble family, she wasn't, so he couldn't uh, marry her. And he offered her to be his, um, uh, to be his mistress. She refused because she, she really loved him. And then she could choose or to marry someone she doesn't love or to be courtesan, which at that um, time was um, accepted as an independent status for women. And paradoxically, the courtesans had access to education, which mm-hmm. married women didn't have. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't need it. They, they just needed to be yeah, in the home. They, yeah. yeah, and uh, so, uh, so the courtesans, they were very often sharp, witty, charming, you know, like leading woman who could choose with whom they, I would say like single, single uh, successful woman mm. uh, of known days. And um, so s- she chose to be independent, to attract him, not to beg for his love. And uh, she was one of the um, most respected poetists of that time. She, you know, she, she was really uh, on, on the poem contests beating the guys and she was highly intellectual uh, she had quite um, a political power because she was uh, acquaintance with with wealthy and powerful men. Then she was accused of um, witchcraft, and um, they almost burned her. And uh, then all the guys stood uh, beside her. Mm. So, uh, so uh, the Inquisition was expelled of the free state of. Uh, Venezia, because it it happened in Venezia. A fascinating story, and if you if you go further, every culture, almost in every century, had this kind of woman, and I always absolutely identified myself with those women. And it has to do with uh, I think our archetypes. You know, mm. Toni Wolff was the mistress of Carl Jung. Uh, one of the theories says that. She is the creator of all the Jung's theories, not him. She couldn't publish because she was a woman. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a book about four female uh, archetypes. Uh, I hope I put it together. Uh, The Hetera, the Mother, Medium, and Amazon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amazon are women who fight for um, society, for for human rights, for like the... um, activists, feminists, and so on. Mothers, that's clear. Medium are women who tend to melt in others in other people could be like psychologists or therapists or 
uh, social workers, stuff like this. And then you have the archetype of heteros, which are the powerful woman behind powerful men, very often not married to them. Mm. Probably I have this archetype, you know, and the, the driving power is independence, you know. So you dedicate your life to a guy who is not yours, and it's it's very uh, often intellectually driven, or you you are on search all your life, you know, because settle down with less would be sacrificing your gifts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there is so many ways how to look at it. But how 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 is it for you now? Like you know, like you a p- part of this kind of what do you say a rise of the female, if we can. Say, say that in in some way. Yeah, and can I add something? Mm-hmm. You ask me if is it difficult for me to fulfill all, all the, roles. the roles. Yeah. No, because it's me. I mean, I mean, it's still you. I mean, um, they say if the eros is present, uh, w- where is the eros? There is creativity and fun and joy. You know, mm. so you can be mom and and make make the pancakes and and dance with the kids kids and have mess in the house and and laughing. A lot and 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 being playful and joyful. That that's part of us. I mean, you know, how how can you separate the motherhood of the rest of who you are? If you were playful before, you will be playful even by delivering children. You know. And yeah, but I think showing them the word and yeah. Yeah, but I think I think but I think I think it's a um, it's maybe a little bit of a conflicting thing because. In one way, we have told women, yeah, you can be whatever you want. You can be that sexual figure. You can be that mother. You can be that career person. You can be that partner. You can be whatever you want, which is great. But we've also told them, but yeah, you still have to be the best mom in the world. And if you don't stay home with your kids as long as they need you or whatever, then you might or might not be a bad mom. And mm-hmm. and often the most judgmental people are other moms or other women. Yeah. And so I I, I, f- I feel with a lot of, lot of times, I feel women have guilt. They feel that they're letting s- something down, that they're not doing everything as good as they could or or something you never had this yeah it's of course i did it's um dogmatizing mm. um paradigm uh, just before you came i was listening some um, program on the radio about some holy figure of czech history i don't remember her name and she she was very religious and she was um deciding between uh the being a nun to to be the the bride of the Jesus Christ and mm. and uh, and to deliver her work uh, in service of other people or to get married, and she chose marriage. And it's interesting <laughs> how she explained it. She said, even a slave, even um, um, a nun or or. Um, um, I don't know in English the word servant, S- servant oh, kind God, of you yeah. know like a servant to others has right for his own life, mm. mother and wife never mm. is is has yeah, less yeah. rights yeah, than yeah, than yeah. the slave. Yeah, yeah. This is a sick digma, uh, paradigm, mm. you know, mm. and 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 dogma, and I I think this is somewhere uh, in the background of our values, which is completely wrong. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, and I totally agree with that. I, 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 I think it's wrong, but I, I, but I still think we have it. It's there, you know, it's and it's a small yeah. voice somewhere mm-hmm. saying these things. And but, but part of this kind of yeah, female rise of the female has been that older women are more attractive in some way, or it's more socially normalized to find older women attractive. You know, we have this whole word, MILF, for example, that kind of kind of came out of pornographic, but became almost like a mainstream mm-hmm. word, you know, mm-hmm. it, and it it's not, I, I, of course, that depends a little bit on cultures and people, but it's, it's not necessarily a degrading thing anymore, like maybe in the beginning it was more like a slang thing, and now, you know, like... Uh, 
you can hear girls say, yeah, I'm a MILF, you know, like, and they are not ashamed. It's not a shameful thing somehow. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and that's that's something that kind of I realized. I said to some friend of mine, like, I don't know, I told him, like, yeah, when you, when you as a guy turn, like, 30, you stop looking at the daughters and you start looking at the moms. Because <laughs> it just, your radar changes somehow. Uh-huh. And, and attractiveness goes maybe away from body looks and some sort of a visual perfection into more attitude uh, radiated car- charisma or something yeah. like that ha- is this something you experienced are, are younger men attracted to do you do you feel this that that you attract young men yes <laughs> how young how young age of my son like 30 30 oh. less also and how how does that make you feel flattered yeah i mean you know uh, i i can understand why they are attracted because many women of my age are well maintained and um easy going you know they are not drama queens mm. and they know what they want so you know they go for quality mm. And you, th- and you think that men sense this somehow? You know what I mean? That younger men will sense this, let's say, the security, self security, s- self confidence. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that's the sexy element in it—the yeah. self confidence. You know, mm. that uh, I know, I know it all. I tried it out. Uh, I know, you know, what satisfies me. Mm-hmm. They are also less um, conscious of. You know, uh, like like they don't pose in in bedroom. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They just enjoy. Yeah, right? yeah. But if if something like or when this happens, let's say, well, okay. So first of all, how does it happen? I'm like, do you have an example of, of like like you met a guy, a young guy, he got attracted? How does th- such a guy approach someone like you? Like mm. they just come and say hi, or you know, like. Well, I uh, the father of my second son is uh, seven years younger. I know mm. it's not that uh, age uh. difference, but at the time it was quite a age difference. And first of all, I don't, I never feel my age. That's that's a little bit trouble because mm. I feel in my soul young. So I um, naturally have good, you know, connection with younger people, woman or men. And he. Um, he conquered me with his wittiness and and sense of humor. Mm. I, I think I think it's the same. Like mm. he would be different age. But you would not mm. like. I, I, I'm I'm not like or a woman or your friends. You know, like you have friends your age and like you. It's not like a. Uh, how do you say you? Would you? Would you be with a man that is twenty years younger than you? Like in a relationship, I, not me, but I have friends who have satisfying relationships of mm-hmm. this kind, secret, sa- uh-huh. secret relationships. Uh, uh, and uh, my my mother in law is happily together for, surely, maybe forty years with a guy who is seventeen years younger. Wow! And you would not even see the difference. You know, they are old couple already. She's over eighty, and and he's sixty uh, something. Mm. Um. But they had really satisfying relationship, mm. and um, yeah. But uh, and and back to your question, what girls of my age appreciate about those young lovers is that they they really see them. Mm. They are they see qualities we forgot we have, you know. Mm-hmm. They admire us for easygoingness for like you know the practicality for mm. um definitely the skills we have through the years um, in, in 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 the intimate mm-hmm. part of life and uh, they bring romance they bring um the adoration you know it's very difficult to be adored like that if you are of our age i mean those guys they really they give you the best out of them, you know. Mm. They they are often really honestly in love, you know. They they offer to raise children who are almost the same age, yeah. <laughs> which is really funny. 
but it's 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 very genuine in a way so i can understand you know after having very unfulfilling marriage to to have scope of this it's refreshing mm-hmm. but you said that some of your friends that are they have satisfying relationship with younger but secretly so yeah. they are married i guess then or 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 or, or not married but they, they don't, don't they don't show it publicly yeah. but but they really it, it brings quality to their life Yeah, I, I, and it's them who ends it. Yeah, in the woman has the woman the in sake of the young guy. Like, go ahead, find a girl of your age. You know, settle yeah. down, have kids. Yeah. And the boys are very often brokenhearted, and it's it's I could really name. You know, it's uh, mm. not that unusual. Because the woman is kind of in the power position. She is in the power, mm. definitely. Yes. But that must be very kind of uh, empowering somehow to to have this, as you say, this adoration. And knowing that you have a control that maybe traditionally a woman might not have, you know, like mm. or might not have in a marriage or something like that. That you know, unfortunately, a lot of women have somehow been ent- entrapped into into unhappy situations. So it's a, it must be a very kind of powerful feeling. It's powerful, and in a way, there is something natural about it. I was thinking. Um, I don't know how to put it if I put it right now, but uh, you know, it looks like uh, the biological clock is um, is urging the woman because mm-hmm. you know one day it's too late to have children. And that's when the man have the power. No, because we look <laughs> from the wrong perspective on it. Mm-hmm. This is true, and it's true that men theoretically can spread his seeds, you know, till ninety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you told the me about a friend of yours that had a seventy-year-old yes, dad. Yes, uh, b- but my point is. In what quality? Because the mechanics of the erection doesn't work very often. Okay, you have Viagra, but in female um, erotic life, it's getting better and better with age. You know, mm. so uh, I I don't I don't feel like outcast at all. I'm I'm no. growing into into more mature, more quality. You know, if you know what you want, mm. I, I I don't really feel like outcast. I I would feel like outcast being a man with uh, erectile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, and I, and when I mentioned outcast earlier, I think what I mean more is is the the social part of it because um, it's like l- if ninety percent of of the population somehow is living the same kind of lifestyle, like a family of two people, man and a woman, uh, two or three kids in the home. Uh, two jobs and two cars and and then okay here is that single fifty year old attractive woman. Uh, where does she fit into this? Because those people who live this traditional life, they would then meet other people that live that traditional. They 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 know parents of all the kids from the school, so they hang out with them. There's uh, another family next door in the village or in the in the in the apartment in the building. And I see it in my house because mm. you know we don't have any children. But I can see that all the all the people that have kids, they are hanging out in the garden. We're never invited because mm-hmm. we, we you know what should we be doing there? Sure. You know, like yeah. we we can't talk about diapers or whatever or or how how little Johnny is doing in school or something. Mm. We have dog friends, you know. I have made a l- by having having the dog. She's here on the floor. I don't know if if you're watching this on the video on YouTube, then <laughs> then there's a dog on the floor. I'm not sure she's on on camera, but so I know a lot of people through that. And what I mean is is outcast in this way that that is hard to kind of find where you fit in mm. if you're not doing the same like everybody else. And so that's something that I was curious about, like how. How is it to be a single, attractive, fifty-year-old that still wants to go out and have fun, still wants to live life, but what you know, like, what, do you, <laughs> where do you go then? You know, like, do you have younger friends, for example? Do you hang out with younger people in general? Mm, not necessarily. No. Um, I I would more refer to to other point of view. When you said about uh, the relationship outside of marriage, mm. because I think uh, you know, if we, we spoke about it, if you have this traditional setup when the guy is successful and makes the money, and she is home state mom, mm. uh, 
after 20 years is very difficult to, um, or it really takes effort and work to be the same like at the beginning because you you are shaped and primed by your own experiences. Mm. And they are completely different. One completely from home, different. one from... So, so, so what often happens is that the home state mom feels frustrated, socially um, disclosed, and very often she has not much to say. You know, she doesn't have these attractive stories like if you go chase business and meeting people and, mm. and having situations and having your glorious victories and having having your dips and downs and so on it's all you 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 grow you you learn you are on a path but with the kids you know they grow up and 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 then the, you the, stand the, there and the, the, the mm -hmm. life is stereotyped um you lost your position on the working market very often many women do not dare anymore Mm. We have one of the highest dropout of um, university moms coming back to, to job. It's extremely difficult in Czech Republic. And um, so then uh, then it's very easy to, to get attracted to women of the same kind, I mean, to your colleague. And this is what, what uh, happens. happens all the time. Mm. We just don't talk about it. And, and uh, yeah, it's a little Greek drama, but that's how it goes. So, mm. I mean, if you are in business, you are always surrounded with quite interesting people. Mm. So that's not that you don't belong anywhere, if, if, you know. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know what you mean with that. And I think, like, yeah, in your case, and maybe that's the thing. Like, you have kind of been living in that world that it doesn't really matter to you whether you're married, divorced, dating, relationship, or whatever, because you're always going to be in that world. You're never going to be that stay-at-home mom that kind of then realizes one day that the kids are gone, What's my? what am I supposed to do? And my husband doesn't understand me anymore and I don't understand him. So so you kind of, you've always operated in that area anyway where that stimulation and that satisfaction comes from that environment. But it's just, I, I have a feeling that a lot of people fear this somehow, this... Uh, leaving an unhappy marriage for example mm. well you have the trend of the great divorces now mm. like, like um, bill gates divorced at his mm. 75 mm. in 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 order to explore new experiences mm. uh, it's more and more common mm. um, i think you cannot skip or avoid the midlife crisis if you are home state mom or or businesswoman i we, we face it mm. Uh, just we have different um, starting point. You know, my starting point was, of course, I was longing to be stay stayed at home mom. Mm -hmm. I was overworked, tired, exhausted. You know, doubtful. It, it was not always, you know, like like fluid with sun and and fun. It was not like that. Uh, but we have to cope with it, uh, cope with it. So 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 my my starting point is that now it's. Uh, my time you know uh I st i'm still not satisfied with my career so it's actually now i would like to achieve something now my second son w is 18 was 18 this year so um um yeah he should be a little bit more independent and uh i have my bucket list you know and and i go for it and um there is a lot of freedom because of my age because there is less expectations. And I can understand the drama of the home state mom who feels unloved, un understood, you know, um, misunderstood, um, underestimated. But, but she should make her choice. And being in a relationship is it's not solving everything. It's, it's beautiful to have someone you... you you have really bound with you know it's it's of course it's beautiful if 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 you can share your soul and body and 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 mind mm. and it's never too late to to look for it and have the courage you know so mm. i i think i i am a much better partner now and much more ready to have a partner now than i was when i was young i was just wild i wanted i wanted it all yeah yeah you but I, i i i totally i can totally connect with that i i 
I think that like um, all the relationship that I had before 35, I wasn't mature enough for any of them. You know, mm. I, I didn't know enough about myself or what kind of values I stood for and what kind of life I wanted or anything like that. So I think like, at least with men, that's my kind of take on it, that we grow up very late somehow. And uh, and that makes it actually much more easier in the future. So it's, it's an interesting thing because I, I think a lot of young people are kind of running around to try to take all those boxes, you know, education, family, home, car, all that stuff. And a lot of them then end up figuring out maybe in 15, 20 years that, yeah, we grew apart or, yeah, the, well, this wasn't really what I wanted, but mm -hmm. it's what society told me I had to do. Exactly. And then, uh, whereas I think, like, I'm having, like, uh, my life after 40 is the best life, for mm -hmm. example. Like, it's weird to say this because if you would have told this to me when I was 19, yeah, you're going to have your best time over 40. I was like, fuck you, that's bullshit. <laughs> then I'm going to be old, you know, I'm going to yeah. be a grandpa. But um, yeah, I. I uh, but talking a little bit about this uh, being attractive and uh, and wanting to be attractive. I mean, I, I like you. I know that you. This is something that matters to you. It it matters to you to be. And I don't mean like makeup and that, but just to. To be. Uh, I don't know if there's a better word than a sexual being, but to be a woman. Mm -hmm. To be an attractive female, let's just call it like that. Is that something that, like, um, your sons have a problem with? You know what I mean? Like, do, is it like a home oh, mom? Don't be like this, mom. Are you gonna dress like this now? Or you, do, do, have you had <laughs> yes, these yes, situations? I did, yeah, and, and it truly surprised me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I remember when Nikki, my older son, he was like sixteen, seventeen, and um, we went out for dinner in Belgium. He always spoke very loudly, mom, you know, and he, he made very clearly that I'm his mother. And I said, Nikki, wh why do you shout like that? And he said, because I don't want to be suspected that I have a, I have a date. And I said, come on, how, what are you talking about, about? And he said, mom, you behave exactly like having a date with me. You're looking at me in adoration. You are laughing to all my jokes and you constantly touch my hand, which is true because I, you know... Um, it's your son. <laughs> you love him. I yeah. love him. Yeah. I was fascinated. And I, I, it was really a, a quite hard feedback and I, had, I, I realized, yes, I really exaggerate. I really uh, act like dating him and, and, and showing off, you know, proudly with him. So... Then we had a period and he always walked like two meters in front of me <laughs> or behind me and I should not publicly approach him. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had to survive this one. And then when his friends uh, approved me, then he was like proud that I'm his mom. But, but he really had a lot of, um, not insecurity, but difficulty to, to, mm -hmm. yeah, to be with me. And now uh, my younger son, uh, Alex, he had um, a ball. He is in the fourth grade in uh, in the. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Oh, you saw you put yes. them on on your Facebook. Yes, I saw yes, the pictures. Yes, yeah, yes. and um, you know my my mom she had uh, recently brain stroke. It's um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the sandwich generation, so now it's it's really difficult for us. And I went every day to the hospital to Karlsbad after this broadcast. I I go again to to Karlsbad to we are taking her home for for Easter holiday. And uh, so what I want to say is there was absolutely no time to maintain myself for the ball. But of course, in life of my son, it's, it's, um, it's a peaking moment, mm -hmm. you know. It's very important, uh, especially in the context that um, during the COVID, he didn't have dancing classes. He, the first and second grade, when you are priming who you are in the group as a male, mm -hmm. you know, uh, who is the alpha, who is the beta, dating girls and so on. He was at home, uh, you know, in lockdown. So I missed this he, he chance. Missed, he missed yeah. it. So so I really wanted to, to make it super special for him. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have really time to, to, to be beautiful or whatever. So so I didn't make my hair and I didn't have the right dress. We didn't rehearse dancing with the parent and so on. So I took um, a summer dress, which is quite daring, uh, a leopardy. Uh, print uh, a little bit too long and too large so I had to 
uh, you know, hold the skirt all the time so I don't step over it, even even I had pumps. And and I was, you know, and I thought like, um, um, it's a pity because it should be really something special that we have time to put us together, you know, uh, to, to have uh, extensive breakfast in the morning before it starts. But I just came from Carlsbad straight to the ball. And I appeared there and and I was very delighted and flattered that Alex, I could see he's proud on me. So he took me and he introduced me to all his friends, majority I know already. And then we had the dance, you know, and then he said, Mom, you are such a low party woman, you know. Yeah, yeah. I am so proud. So You're a tiger. You are a tiger, <laughs> tiger woman. And it was not meant like that, but I, I was super happy that he perceived it like this. And I, I think it's nice for Sam to be super proud on his mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, you shared your experience that mom was everything but sexy for mm -hmm. you. It was a mom. Mm -hmm. For me, my mother, I always perceived her like a beautiful woman. And I always wanted to be like her, you know. it's uh, I... Uh, I was aware that I had quite attractive grandmothers uh, uh, with with grand manners, you know, these this, this old school ladies mm. who wear pearls and, and could, could dress up for the man. I, I think this is a quality I inherited and, and I highly recommend to women, I mean, be beautiful for your man. I mm. don't, you know, I'm, I'm talking like independent woman, but I don't have the feeling that word is owing me something or that men should serve me because I had a bad time in my life. I absolutely have no issue to subdue to a man mm. if he respects me. You mm. know? So I, I think it's again more complex than just to be MILF, you know. Yeah, no, no, it, it is. I, but, but I think like we, we want to view society in some very kind of simple ways and try to either put people into some categories or silos or boxes or something like that. And when no two people are the same, no no people react in the same way or desire the same thing, it's a very kind of diverse thing. But, but that you need to be brave. You need to be brave to go to your son's ball and look hot, you know, like it's, uh, it's not... It's not because uh, there will also be some <laughs> bitches and assholes there that will be, ah, oh, look at her. What is she trying to be now? You know, like there are always those that are kind of trying to tear you down if you dare to be different or dare to be. Oh, then in uh, advantages that my son is studying artistic school. So yeah, if you okay. don't show off, you are nobody and nothing. Aha, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, uh, yeah, it's the right school. It's the right school for both of us. Yeah. But uh, talking this age thing a little bit, there was another thing about that. I was asking you if younger men are attracted to you. And, and um, there was a interesting study that I read once uh, that, uh, and it was actually based on data. Like they, they, they got, four million people or something to to vote which age they would go for mm -hmm. like what age range would be acceptable to them and it was what the interesting thing was that that men have always a lower level at 18 so a 75 year old man he would say yeah i would go for 18 to 85 oh, in a okay. woman mm -hmm. and and a 35 year old would say yeah i would go for 18 to 39 or i would go for 18 to 59 or whatever so so 18 state the same like men have this feeling about themselves that they can attract and be with a young woman mm -hmm. and they find nothing wrong with admitting it it's not like a a taboo somehow to say it and uh, um and then on the woman's side, it changed a lot because mm -hmm. the woman was always kind of like, who would you date or who would you be with? Yeah, my age plus minus seven years somehow. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, yeah, and it I was see. such a... And it made me really think about, is it about... Is it the somehow a social acceptance or is the woman afraid that if she had a younger man, much, much younger, that she will lose him to somebody else, or if she has a much older man, he will just die and leave me alone or something. Any, any... Um, there must be some evo uh, evolutionary, evolutionary reason for that. Uh, it's true that I would never think of 
really young man, you know, like generation younger. But if he is there and flatters you, you just, you know, it's it's not that you are thinking about it. It's just happening and then mm-hmm. you deal with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, the Madame Bovary, Mrs. Jones, it's, it's centuries, it's all mm-hmm. same story. It's mm-hmm. nothing exceptional. Mm-hmm. Always have been here. Mm-hmm. The... The Me Too thing, like we 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 had this, I don't know, it's maybe five years or something mm, since this mm. kind of started. And 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 I mean that has done a lot of positive things, but it's also had has like everything else, it has mm. a lot of po- kind of negative um, symptoms. Also, if and I often think about this because um, harassment, for example, like. Uh, do you often feel harassed by men? Is this something that you feel like, are they pushing too much or are they showing you unwanted attention? Is this something that you have experienced? I have to say, I may be exception. Never. No? What What irritates me and what I feel is that I am... Uh, I face more like chauvinism. I face more um, intellectual doubt but not harassment and not even when I was young, you know. So there is an equality between men and women, in, uh, especially in the world I, 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 operate in. I operate in. But in my eyes, no is no. Mm. Men do understand it. Mm. I'm not over sensual to compliment mm. because if it's easy compliment, you just don't pay attention and, and, and you just ignore it, you know. Mm. If it's a nice uh, compliment, it belongs to life. I, I think it's 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 nice mm. to be complimented. I just recently had discussion with a woman of my age. Uh, I I trained in uh, Barandov Studios, you know. It's the mm. Baker's Hollywood, Film Studio, yeah, Hollywood yeah, of Hollywood, Czech Republic. Uh, exactly. And um, we discussed the exchange of generation. Mm. And the woman of my generation, they all said, I don't mind if men slap me on my butt. Mm. And then the young girls said, what, like an, like an animal? And they said, no, it's uh, attention. And they said, yeah, well, we are talking not about your men. We are talking about men in general. And those women said, yeah, I'm talking in general. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, think, I think there is completely different filter on that. Mm-hmm. Because you should understand that we grew up, my generation grew up in society which was um, isolated from the outside world. Mm. And uh, we have deteriorated view on what was going on in elsewhere, the West, yeah. elsewhere. Mm. So the only movies we could see were Italian and French. They were quite incorrect. It mm. was over-sexualized in a funny way. I mean, I grew up on Belmondo. He was my hero. Mm. I mean, he was un- uh, unfaithful, you know, f- mm-hmm. uh, um, flirting all around. But in, in such a, you know, 60s, 70s, it was a kind way. You mm. know, it was not vulgar at all. So so um, our normality is primed by by these experiences. Yeah, Nin- and then you, yeah. Live the, you live the 90s and... Uh, the internet when the internet that's a highly kind of sexualized uh, world that's that we come sexu- from yes that's yeah, highly sexualized you, mm. you had every second movie have been highly sexualized mm. i mean uh, eroticism mm. nude bodies but uh, we didn't have the criminality you know there was no cruelty in it uh sexuality was what, sexuality what is it i it was erotic it oh. was not really sexual oh. you know this is this is i think i'm primed my by this and the new generation is primed by criminalizing things which are natural, mm. you know, vulgarizing them. Also, access to porn scene, mm. it is, it must have influence on, mm. you know, how you perceive things. I, I, I often think about with, uh, let's say, uh, I mean, uh, obviously everyone has different boundaries, but I feel with, with uh, in, in some cases like with me too and a lot other kind of social matters then then we are we are always kind of placing the responsibility for how i feel on you and i don't you know for me that's weird you know if mm-hmm. if if you are supposed to be always responsible for how i feel then then what am i then responsible for and mm-hmm. and there are i've often thought about this with with me too for example when you see some of the 
the descriptions of of a person saying, uh, I felt that this man uh, overstepped my boundaries, and then you ask, okay, so how? Yeah, well, he offered me a drink, and and when I said no, he said, well, why not? I'm really fun, blah blah blah. And then when I said no to that, he said, yeah, but listen, you know, I, I, you know, I'm really would really like to know you. And then the third time I told him off, and he left. And then this person might go and say, yeah, this man overstepped my boundaries. And and I th- I think about it this way: if she would have found this man attractive there would have been no boundaries overstep because mm-hmm. she would have been attracted to him. She would have said yes to the drink. She would have said, yes, sit down. Here, yes, I want to, I don't know, go for dinner with you or mm. whatever would have been the next step. So the only trigger for the boundaries to be overstepped is whether the person is attracted to you. And I find that a very, it's a very difficult thing because, okay, if I would come in here... um maybe looking very unattractive, I don't know, I had something in my beard or <laughs> my clothes were dirty or whatever, you know, some something that is off-putting. Then I could know that, yeah, okay, I don't have a chance here because, but, you know, other than that, how am I supposed to know as a man if a woman will find me attractive or not? And uh, And then the same woman might say to the guy, listen, you, you just didn't try hard enough. And he maybe said, she said, no, I don't want you to drink. No, I don't want you to sit here. And then mm-hmm. he just leaves. Then maybe they meet a week later or two, or two years later. And he said, yeah, I remember you from the bar. I was hitting on you. He said, yeah, yeah, you just didn't try hard enough. What the fuck? I don't know. I think in some way this is a negative effect of this because it makes men in this case, because Me Too has primarily been about men being bad to, or doing the wrong thing to women, even though... All men that I know have had a very similar experience from a woman, and we just don't care. We don't feel the need to tell anyone about it. It's just something that happens. It's part of being a man and a woman. So I feel that with this, it makes men scared. That am I doing yes. something wrong? Am no, I crossing no. some boundaries? I, I you want someone to spank your ass, <laughs> but I don't think you can find anyone who dares to do it. <laughs> no, you know what I like. Yeah. You get what I mean, like. Yeah, yeah. Sure. No, I th- I think you are right, and I think it's absolutely not fair to take men as a hostage. Mm. I think it's absolutely not okay. You know, it's not okay to victimize women, and it's not okay to take men as a hostage. Mm. You know, and you are absolutely right because women want to be conquered. They want a male. They want alpha. Mm. You know, they long for it. Mm. If I can have alpha, I, I go for alpha, of course, and alpha doesn't give up. So uh, I, I really don't envy the young people of this generation. It's so confusing. But uh, t- uh, this alpha versus beta in, in, in masculinity, how, how, when do you know that? Do you, or do you know what I mean? But what, what gives them away? Like, w- when do you know who is alpha, who is beta? What, what is it that that a woman, do you smell it? Or you know what I mean? Is it the pheromones or wha- what's the what's the key here? I, I think, yeah, pheromones, but it's difficult to describe. Well, there was a study uh, from Amy Cuddy. Uh, she studied um, nonverbal communication and how alpha males and females behave in the kingdom of animals and how they behave between people. Mm. In animals, it's quite obvious because they they are visibly you know, stronger, stronger and bigger. And so and yeah. uh, how do we know uh, between alpha males and females? And so they did um, experiment when uh, they invited students, uh, NBA students, where they they uh, guessed that they will be more alpha, and then normal university students, and they truly interacted differently. So the the alpha were more loud, more outgoing, you know, like huge gestures, taking risk, you know, speaking loud, also making much more mistakes, you know, if the professor asked. They, they were wrong almost all the time, mm-hmm. but they were hurt. Mm-hmm. And then they asked uh, all the students, so who would you choose to lead you? And they definitely chose the alphas. And, mm-hmm. and the professor says, but why? They, they, were, they are more stupid. 
Yeah, and the answer is because they are more daring. So then they made, um, 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 they took a test from the slime and they found out. Fr from the sal saliva? or Yeah, saliva. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And they found out that the alpha female and male, they have very high testosterone. Mm. So daring, risking, you know, gambling, whatever. Low cortisol. They were not in stress. And I think we sense it. You know, and because they have low cortisol, they give you, they are mindful. They are not in the flight, fight mode. Mm -hmm. They are not weird, you know, and they create psychological safety, which ends at the same moment they dominate the, the, dominate the situation. And it's highly attractive. But it's interesting now that I'm listening to you describe this about uh, the cortisol and the testosterone. Because and and you can increase it even by two minute dominant gesture. Mm -hmm. If if you do like the power woman, you know, or like this, anything against the gravitation, you stay for two minutes. You just breathe calmly. The biochemistry will change. So you can even learn it. It's learnable. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, but. I was thinking now, like, yeah, when you were talking about the cortisol and the testosterone, that what you were actually describing is a calm, is a person that that uh, remains calm and has things under control, mm -hmm. not necessarily by force or any dominance, but mm -hmm. just by being, yeah, yes. just by being somehow. Now... That's an interesting thing because what well, there's this word out there now, tos toxic masculinity, which is not this, what you're describing, because, or I would think so, because like a person who is confident, calm, and doesn't get nervous and, and reacts in an irrational way and, and neurotic, you know, that that is not, a toxic person. A toxic person is is actually a person who is neurotic, mm -hmm. uh, unpredictable, Pushing, or yeah. yeah, or or trying to be something that they're not, or something like that. So it just makes me think when I listen to this, I'm like, okay, yeah, actually, testosterone is not the problem here. Uh, maybe it's actually the other way around that the lack of testosterone makes people neurotic, and then they become unpredictable. So so toxic masculinity is actually in some way, a lack of masculinity mm -hmm. then or masculine confidence, let's mm -hmm. say. Yes, yes. Because there is um, also understanding how we operate. If you are in stress, your adrenaline goes up and mm -hmm. your cortisol, mm -hmm. uh, cortisol. And, and, and oxytocin, which mm -hmm. is the hormone of love, kissing and so on, and serotonin, which is the bounding hormone. And both together, these are connecting hormones. They, they drop... Mm. We are overstressed all, 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 all the time. We mm. have, um, you know, in our blood veins, there are rest of old cortisols, which we didn't work out by physical exercise or meditation or something. So we should also look at the situation that the young, young generation is, um, they, and it's proved they are traumatized. There is a generational trauma. They are overstressed. They probably very ha they have very high cortisol which brings the neuroceticism unpredictability and mm. and they they uh, they they lack often the bounding hormones and if you stay in such environment like stressful environment a toxic environment for long period mm. your ability to produce serotonin and oxytocin can stop mm -hmm. and then the anxiety comes mm -hmm. and depression mm -hmm. and you know, why so many people for no reason are so unhappy. Yeah, we never had a better life on earth. Never have fewer people died, starved. Uh, we have fucking everything. And yeah. Everyone is fucking freaking out. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really interesting. And, and, and then you cannot force increasing your bounding hormones. Mm. And as a human beings, we sense it. Mm. You know, this is, we, we want to be we want we need to belong you know mm. so let's say that you talk talking a little bit about the alpha male again yeah. let's mm -hmm. say that you meet uh, an alpha male that you mm -hmm. you see uh, like this guy 
how do you let him know? I let him come to me. Mm. But you give some, I don't know, is it eye contact? I, I drop the handkerchief, <laughs> 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 which means um, I smile back. Yeah. You know, I wait for his, uh, if he if he notices me. Mm. I, I mean, we have our ways, mm. always did, without thinking of it. it, it it's always a painful when it's too cheesy and too obvious and, you know, uh, it should be a little bit playful and... So you don't have like a trick. It's more like um, it's a more natural thing than a. Well, okay. It's everybody has his own style, and now we are again by the seduction profiles. You know, my profile is that I am easy accessing. I am I am a little bit tending to please other people. I am open minded. I am uh, they they call it. I'm really the charmer. So so I go through wit and openness and and helping it. So I I make it really easy for the other ones. Mm. But that's also my pattern in business. Maybe too easy uh, to access. You know, I really have to be mindful about boundaries. Border, mm. Yeah, boundaries about like being tough negotiator and stuff like this. And then everybody has something different. So so. This is really a red flag for many people if I if I talk about it, especially for women who deny being flirting. Mm. And those who deny most are the coquette. Mm -hmm. Their strategy is they deny everything. You have to come, you have to do all the effort in business and in private life. They they say, Yeah, but I I never I never seduced my man. I said, well, he had to do the hard work. He had to mm. conquer you. You ha he had to you refuse him a million times and he again was at the door and they said how do you know i said because it's your seduction Method, profile yeah, it's your yeah. it's your style mm. so uh, so you know and then then s certain styles match and certain styles do not match so mm. i don't have one trick and uh, i don't think there is one size fits all mm. uh, but if i would give one one tip it's mirroring mm. you know if i want to seduce you and i don't know how to do it i would just mirror you until yeah. you start to laugh yeah, and yeah. then we have connection yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the moment you laugh then you start to say is is she attentive or is she flirting yeah. with me yeah, you know? yeah, and yeah, then yeah. and then uh, th that's a trigger and yeah, then yeah. yeah no it's an interesting thing i mean with men i i um i think i tried it uh in the past like uh I, but i don't know i think i'm not sure i just tried it i think i live it in some way it's this peacocking you know to to be this bird that mm -hmm. has these feathers you know and and uh, and it's 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 in the end it's about standing out it's about you being in that tiger dress at your son's ball you know mm -hmm. it's about uh, i don't know wearing a cowboy hat when you go to the bar because it's different it's going to be different than everybody else in the bar nobody else will have unless you're in texas or something but in in a normal czech bar for example if you're the guy with the cowboy hat it's 100 percent sure that more girls would talk to you than the guy that does not have a cowboy hat you know like um, mm -hmm. so so it's an interesting thing what you just said about like this imitating for example and getting the attention that that's something that is not the norm because i don't think that even every woman would think of this you mm -hmm. know like to come up okay yeah the, he, this is how i can get this guy attention and check if there is some connection so it's an interesting thing actually that, that's what kids do and it's always cute yeah yeah, yeah exactly it works yeah. there and it's yeah. the same like w yeah. with a cowboy hat you know if there was a kid on the on the in my street that came out with a new toy then everybody was excited about mm -hmm. that kid you know and then maybe the day after it would be a different kid that came with a different toy. But um, but I'm, yeah, uh, so that one trick that, yeah, okay, I like that trick. But um, you told me before, like you said, that you don't want that guy that invites you to Paris, that's his first sentence or something. But let's, let's eliminate the Paris too, guys. Too much show off. Yeah, uh, let's mm -hmm. eliminate that. But what... Like, what's the wrong approach from a guy? Like, and I don't mean with, like, is it arrogance or is it like, wh what's the c complete turn off if we eliminate Paris? Yeah. If we just yeah, say yeah, that yeah, there's yeah. no Paris, what's the what's the worst thing a guy can do? Um, 
I, maybe the toxic masculinity, but what did you mean by toxic masculinity? Like macho kind of behavior? Yeah, I mean that. I think that's the. If you look it up in a dictionary, that we would see some macho. But but what you described here was mm-hmm. very macho, but very calm mm-hmm. macho. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm confused now about toxic masculinity. Okay. <laughs> Chauvinistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would I guess that would be for me toxic masculinity yes, to okay, be okay. degrading that's, women somehow. That's turn off definitely. Mm. So chauvinistic is turn off, and then uh, like begging for attention is also uh-huh. turn off. You know, too too much. Yeah. And um, sleazy. So if I had the cowboy hat and was singing also very <laughs> loud and jumping on one leg, that would be too much. The cowboy hat is enough. Sleazy. What's sleazy? Sleazy is like making... Um, Sexual comments. Uh, recently I was in Brno uh, on um, psychotherapeutical training. Uh, mm. we, we spent a week there and it's always very... Um, you connect to your inner child. You are very vulnerable. It's it's a very special time of uh, you 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 expose your soul and you behave a little bit differently. And uh, often you are or absolutely dead, and you have to go early to bed. And we uh, the trainings are till ten eleven in the evening. You know, so so often you just go and you you hit the pillow, or you just are so overcharged with energy, and that happened to me. And so me and uh, another friend of my uh, female friend, she, we went to a bar and and we made a tour. And then we wanted to dance. We just needed it, needed it to, to to get it out of the body. And it was in the middle of a week, so it was quite you know calm everywhere. And uh, so so we danced in, in uh, on a parquet, and a guy came a little bit tipsy, watching us, you know, like like trying to seduce, but but in such a completely silly sleazy stupid you know way so so we turned our back to him and we um, um we just ignored him and then he made some proposal and and you know the easiest way how to get out of it is like we don't like guys we like girls only. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and he said so do i and it's not funny yeah i mean we said okay congratulations so <laughs> what you know i mean you know it has to be. <laughs> so this is a trick to get out of the situation. We, I uh, like girls. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Um, you are very, you know, you are interesting and quite handsome. But sorry, you are not my preference. If you, if you just don't want to waste time, you know. <laughs> but uh, I already met guys who turn it completely witty way, you yeah. know. And then you have to uh, laugh, and then he says, "I got you. You are not uh, lesbian." And uh, you say, "Oh, you know, it's all about being." Easy going, being playful, not not forcing it, making it safe for the girl, you know. Yeah. Or I, I give you another example of uh, I had a client and he was constantly inviting me for dinner or lunch and I refused and um and he kept calling and I said, listen, um, it, I I'm really flattered, but you know I'm not mishmashing business and private and obviously you are interested in me uh, as a woman, and he said, no, I'm. Truly, honestly interested in your eating habits. <laughs> <laughs> I s- he said, just promise me there is a time of a day you eat. I said, yes. And he said, let me be there. <laughs> That's funny, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, <laughs> But uh, talking about this, because like you, you kind of live in this very male-dominated environment, the business world. Um, um, you, your work is very much about yeah soft skills and and uh, using character, charisma, seduction, and 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 things. And you need and uh, I, mean, I mean that's both what you're teaching or training or practicing with with your subjects or clients. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's also your way of living. You know, it's your way of of promoting yourself. Do you often get this circle? You just described now some guy that was interested in your eating habits. Uh, do you often get into those situations that that your way of being is misunderstood somehow? Often, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And is that like um, because I'm uh, yeah? It must be it must be a little bit tricky because in in one way your only way of being is being this open charming person or you and you have to be that mm-hmm. but on the other hand 
how do then people handle it when you refuse them? Do you lose them as a customer? <coughs> That's a question. I think I am, first of all, people who refuse me judge without talking to me. Yeah, but the ones that you refuse, if I, if and the one, um, no, then I I went f- to have a lunch and we became friends mm-hmm. because it was really funny. Yeah, you know, and yeah, and it didn't have no, any consequence no, or no, anything like no, that. Absolutely not. He just observed your eating habits. Yeah, and he was happy that I do eat. And, and you <laughs> and you got nu- nu- nutrition. <laughs> everybody won. Yeah, yeah, everybody won, and uh, it's kind of really. It's fun. I mean, you, we sh- we should not lose this uh, playfulness mm. despite our relationships. I mm. mean, you know, you can be happily in a relationship and still having lunches or breakfast like we had today. Mm. And talking to other people, it is the flavor of our life. So mm. I, I, I I would not separate it. It's, it's a quality. Mm. And I try... I, I think I'm, I'm quite professional in my work. So I'm, I'm talking about flirting. I'm not... If if I seduce, I seduce for business. And what I mean by seducing for business is that I don't have to force the client because this style is not my thing, you know. I am not really tough negotiate. I can be, but it's not really my, my thing. And, like, I'm not a hunter. You have people who hunt for business who are good in it, like opening the doors. I, I'm not good in it. So my way is I let them to come to me, mm. which is in a way, and they come free willingly, with pleasure and expectation. Mm. And that's actually what seduction is about. I mm. mean, uh, uh, how it ends up, it's up to us. Mm. Do you understand? So I, I, I don't mm. mean it really like sexual. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I know what you mean. It's more to be, Push to forward. kind of lay the path yeah. towards you instead of going towards them somehow. So, so I'm, I'm more talking about playfulness. Mm. On this, like, <coughs> now, we are all aging, we are all getting older, and uh, I think it's harder for a woman to age than it is for a man in, in some way. Like, um, how how is that for you? Like, uh, you actually told me once, uh, you said, I asked you if you've always been attractive, you said, no, not when I was 30, I didn't see myself as attractive, you know, like, but I guess that's just because you were feeling bad about mm, something yeah, else. Yeah, sure. But how is it to age and do you feel some sort of a clock ticking or do you just take it for what it is or how how, mm. how is this? It's I think it's really difficult to age. Mm. Um, and, you know, for me it was not a topic for a very, uh, for a very long time because I don't do any effort. And it's easy to be ignorant enough to say I'm not afraid of aging if you still look good and you do nothing. I mean, I don't exercise. I don't go to cosmetics regularly. Mm. You know, I just, I'm just lucky. And, but it will end. It will end. And uh, yesterday when I was uh, in Holland, I got a horrible allergy and I, I didn't have my medicals with me and I was sneezing all the time. And then I I had swollen eyes and then I looked in the mirror and I saw wrinkles I never saw before, you know. And I was thinking, <gasps> It's here. <laughs> and then I said, I will have a problem with aging. You know, I'm, I'm very hypocrite about it. Mm. Um, so we have to accept it. Mm. And on the other hand, you have so many tools and possibilities to postpone the aging. Now, the, the, the discussion should be what is the healthy, you know, attitude and what is unhealthy already. Mm. Um, so my personal point of view is that sexiness and femininity doesn't age. Mm. Look at Helen Mirren, for example. Mm. You know, you can be a lady with white hair, mm. not trying to look like like a, a schoolgirl. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you can have this young... Um, I, I will put it differently. If you look at our ex-president... Miloš Zeman and Mick Jagger. Mick Jeb- Jagger is one year older. Yeah. One <laughs> of them is in a wheelchair <laughs> and the other one is... And the thing is that it's not only that you have a lot behind you, but if you appeal like you have a lot in front of you, uh-huh. you know, yeah, yeah, 
it, that's, uh, it means that that's there's something youthful, yeah. something attractive. There is a certain kind of sex appeal in it. Mm-hmm. You know, you appeal because you create the the expectation that there is a lot in front of us and it's not a question of age. You can have yeah, yeah. 30-year-old people where you don't expect much going on in the future. Yeah, yeah. And and you, you can have 50 plus hungry for life, you know. Yeah. So I think I think really it's more in the attitude, and of course a little bit maintenance. Yeah, yeah, of <laughs> course, no, but uh, but I I think I I read it somewhere. I was running in the half marathon. I was running behind some guy who wore a t-shirt, and he, it's a quote from um, some uh, probably a philosopher or something, and he said the goal is to die as young as possible at late as late as possible. Yes. So keep it's that beautiful. youthful yeah. feeling, but until you die you know like exactly. uh, if that's at 90 that's fine you know and and uh, but i but i also uh, yeah i think like th- this is one of those those things that that the society has changed or we're transitioning a little bit like we with people getting older and older like if i think about it now when i was born my grandparents <coughs> were <coughs> my age sorry <laughs> aska hi to you a little bit of a guard dog here and uh, yeah when when i was sorry guys for this um um <laughs> shit happens and uh, when yeah so when i was born my grandparents were my age and they were just old people to me and now i look at myself and i don't feel old and i think you know maybe they didn't feel old but i'm pretty sure though that they you know, my grandpa did not run a marathon. He did not drive a Harley Davidson. He didn't, you know, go out and get wasted with uh, my grandma or something. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah. and and so I think we are lucky enough to kind of live through this kind of transitional time mm-hmm. where actually we are allowed and accepted as participants in some activities that our grandparents and and parents would never have been able to do. You know. And that also then means that mm-hmm. we we look at aging in a different way. You know, like you you think I think more about my health now, and you know, like yeah, I need this body to last me, and I need to kind of look decent. You know, I cannot become whatever, blah blah blah, because it's not game over yet. You mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. I'm I'm still yeah. in the game. You know, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, one one thing at the end that I wanted to just out of curiosity and and that's maybe more for the 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 czech listeners um or the expats that live here in the czech republic how because now you you've had a you have a child or your older son you have with a belgium guy a guy from belgium Mm -hmm. and then your younger son you have with a czech man Mm -hmm. but your czech man though he's an actor so he he kind of i wouldn't say is a stereotypical czech but if you were to try to kind of describe if there's a difference between Czech man and, I don't know, a Belgian or Dutch or, or Norwegian or whatever nationalities other you have mm. kind of experienced. Because I, th- from what I hear, both from Czech women and also from, from expat women here, th- there is... Definitely There's a does. different attitude somehow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how is that for you? I think uh, Western men are more mm, partnering mm-hmm. in household. You know, it's like um, my ex-husband. He is excellent cook, for example. So um, we more. So you had muscle muscles and and <laughs> nice cheeses <laughs> he's, and st- he's, yes. he's uh, vegan now. Um, Aha. Uh-huh. And, uh, but, uh, and I like to cook as well. So, uh, it was a battle for the cooking, not who will uh, escaping it, but who will cook today. Uh-huh. And there is just second skin to help with everything, you know, uh, with, with, uh, without racing. losing the masculinity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, and, uh, it's a quality for the relationship. Definitely. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But in the approach or like, like. Or, or let's say if you if you went now to a bar mm-hmm. in Prague, let's say you went to Tretters. Okay. I bet you've been in Tretters. Of course. Yes. Tretters is a really nice guy, like a cocktail bar, guys, like an upper class cocktail. Uh, I'm always the worst dressed person in Tretters <laughs> when I go there, so it's not where you go in your t-shirt and and jeans necessarily. You you want to look a little bit nicer yes, there. Yes. If you went in there, could you spot? 
a Czech versus a foreigner, or or could you? Is this something that you? Yes. Is there something in uh, the style, absolutely. or or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you have majority foreigners or successful yuppies in in Tatras, so Yeah. I think yeah, a little bit the physiognomy. <laughs> yeah. Um, haircut, mm-hmm. but but the young people are very maintained. Yeah. And the manners. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's then different, like. Because I think we are here living in a country that was coming out of a, let's say, a more conservative model of of female versus male roles in mm-hmm. society and, and you know family and and as you're saying, like I think I think if you take a, a a man my age or older here, yeah, he would probably not be super excited about cooking, mm-hmm. but then if you would go down to maybe thirty thirty five. You, I think you have a different guy, like yes. a Czech guy that is thirty thirty. He he might wanna, you know, he mm-hmm. he wants to be more involved mm-hmm. because that's what he has seen, you know. Like wh- whereas the the guy my age, he spent more than half of his life onto communism or mm-hmm. or and and some very conservative models. So I I I always feel with this country in some way that we live in a country where we almost have like two nations. Mm-hmm. You know, we have the ones that have kind of maturity of their life and education in the kind of old communist system and then we have the ones that are kind of born late enough to have kind of experienced life and the freedom and mm-hmm. that's a very different it creates very different people you know that's true mm. uh, so yeah I think I think Simona we are kind of um, kind of done with this i mean i had a lot of other stuff but we are already at like one hour and 46 minutes guys those of you who are watching the video then hi first of all and uh, uh, the episode is also available on spotify and apple podcast and all that stuff if you don't want to be watching this on on youtube Um, and those of you who are listening on spotify and apple podcast if you want to see two amazing people And the dog, I think she farted actually twice. I don't know if you smelled it, but I smelled it over here. It was horrible, you know. She's, yeah, she's really bad. And uh, Simone, it was great to have you. Always a pleasure meeting you. Uh, we had a great breakfast in the morning as well. And you're going now to Carlo Vivari, Karlsbad. Yes, yes. And uh, bringing your mom mm-hmm. home for Easter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you're going to have some Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> do you boil them here in with the ham and you make them like you s- you you have this ham that you boil and no, then you put the eggs in the in the water of the ham and boil the eggs in the and uh, that water or no. that's only in Hungary. It's in Hungary like yeah. this. Oh, this is bizarre. Yeah. We do uh, colors or we uh, boil it in the peeled onions, you know, so uh-huh. it gets a lovely brownish color. And if you put some like um, this. In Flemish, it's Klavertje Fier, where there's this, this um, leaf with four uh-huh. leaves in it. You know, yeah, 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 lucky, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Lucky. Fjörablas Maori, I don't know the English, that was the Icelandic word, yeah. So The Irish kind of... Yeah, the Irish symbol. Yeah. And you uh, you you uh, cover it with um, the bandage, uh-huh. you know, uh, like... Bon- bondage, like... Uh, if you are injured... Uh-huh. You know, then um, yeah, bandage. Yeah, yeah, bandage. Okay, yeah. It, it absorbs all the color, and uh, then y- then you have this clover kefir or the the, the 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 lucky symbol or any kind of flower on it. And is there like and then some? Then you eat that egg, and you're gonna be lucky, or y- you know what I mean? Is there yes, some? No, I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know. Maybe it's just I, I know that that okay. The the history goes with the that the colors mean something. Mm-hmm. Surely, egg is the the symbol of fertility. Red, something with blood and and new life. I mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly, but okay. in the history, it meant something if you give egg of this color. Yeah, it's much more simple in Iceland. We just eat chocolate, a lot of it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye for bye. Having me. Bye. bye.